Okay, so in this first section of the building modeling, we're going to investigate a simple single zone building model. So we're going to attempt to model this single, simple building here, and we're going to use the type 19 um, single zone model. So you can find that in the loads and structures. Sorry, type 88 is what we're going to use. So what this is, is just a simple lumped capacity building model. It's very simplistic. It, um, we have some internal gains. Uh, there's no solar gains. And we just assume an overall U value for the entire structure. So this is just a good model to think about how building modeling works. And later on, we'll move on to the more complex multi-zone building model type 56 but for now we're going to model the simple building and the first parameters to set up is the building loss coefficient so this is a combination of all of the loss coefficients for the floors the roofs the walls the windows and the doors so here I've estimated some u values for each of the surfaces and based on these dimensions for this building, we have the areas for each of these surfaces. That will give us an overall UA value. And then a total UA value for the whole building. And a total surface area, which we'll also use. And based on that, we get a U, UA value or U value for the overall building by dividing the UA back by the surface area. So we'll use this value of 1.4 here. And then the building capacitance. So that's a combination of all of the building surfaces as well. So we have the area for the wall, roof and floor. And also the air will contribute a small amount of capacitance. And estimate some thicknesses for these surfaces. The thickness here I've used is the height of the building plus half of this roof area just to make the calculation simple for the overall amount of the volume of air. The density for each of these and then rough amount of thermal capacitance for each. So that will give us the total capacitance by multiplying area by thickness will give us volume, multiply by density will give us mass, multiply by capacity will give us the capacitance of units kilojoules per kelvin, and that will give us the overall capacitance of the building. So we can put that there, 27,000, specific heat of the building air, density, building surface area was 162 meters, the building volume, that would be worked it out here. 136. And the others we can leave as is. And now let's add the weather. So we need a type 15. Let's set that up for Sydney again. Of course, as you model along with me, you can always set it up for your hometown and see what the results come to there. So we'll connect this up. So here you can see all the different inputs. We have temperature, ventilation, air, humidity ratio, ventilation, air. Ventilation mass flow rate, ambient temperature. So we'll connect to that ambient temperature. Then the humidity ratio. And here we're going to, for the ventilation, we're going to set up some simple heating and cooling devices. But we'll assume that they also have the same humidity ratio of the ambient. And that's it for now. Now let's set up a plotter and have a look at the basic temperatures that are coming out. So 
as I said before, this is a lumped capacity model, so we just have the zone temperature, and let's also plot the ambient temperature to that plot as well. We can compare the two, set up the plotter properly, and we'll run it for a full month. So we can see the temperature, ambient temperature, is fluctuating and due to the thermal capacitance of our building, it's fluctuating much more slowly than, than the ambient. So in the next section, we'll start adding some infiltration and calculate the building, cooling and heating load.